Hi, welcome to Lagoons Do It Better TV, where we provide bite-sized segments to help your lagoon do it better. I'm Patrick Hill, here with my co-host Brady O'Leary. All right, and we're here to today to talk about lagoon ammonia, specifically how do we treat ammonia in your wastewater lagoon. This is a problem because in 2012, the US EPA issued a mandate requiring a certain concentration of ammonia or below in this nation's rivers, rivers and streams. So this is trickling down through state regulating bodies, and ultimately many facilities, including lagoons, are going to be getting lagoon ammonia permits. So we're here today to talk about what are the conditions for treatment, how do we accomplish this in your lagoon? So in a municipal context, typically what you're looking to do in order to get rid of ammonia is you want to nitrify, right? Which is the process of taking this ammonia, NH3, and converting it first into nitrite and then into nitrate. Mm -hmm. And this is a process done, these nitrifiers uh, are done by a specific kind of bacteria. And they're different than the normal, normal BOD eating bacteria you may be used to in your lagoon. Uh, BOD eating bacteria are called heterotrophs, the kind of bacteria. These nitrifiers are autotrophs, they're very different. One way to think about it is that these heterotrophs, or the BOD bacteria, they're like tiny little terminators. They don't really care too much what the dissolved oxygen content is, what the temperature is. They're really robust, they, they multiply fast, they outcompete a lot of different bugs that are out there. So they're just really, really a, a great treatment technology for, or, or bacteria for these lagoons. But they don't take care of ammonia. For that, we need these autotrophs, or these nitrifiers, it's nitrosomonas and nitrobacter, I believe. Uh, they're very different. Instead of being little terminators, they're like the princess and the pea, right? They want every single condition to be just right, or they're not going to be happy and they're going to whine. So we're here to talk about what these conditions are, what makes the princess and the pea happy, or these autotrophs happy. Uh, and there are six key factors we're going to discuss. Yeah, and, the, and there are obviously a lot more than that, but these are the six key factors. Sure. So I think the first one we look at, we look at oxygen, right? Oxygen is so crucial because um, the autotrophic bacteria need a lot more oxygen than BOD. So as a basis of comparison, when we design an aeration system for a lagoon, we're going to design for one and a half pounds of oxygen per pound of BOD coming in. When we look at nitrification, we need to design for 4.6 pounds of oxygen per pound of BOD coming in. So significantly more per pound uh, in order to get this nitrification in order to provide these bugs with the oxygen they need. Mm -hmm. And in addition, they want a higher dissolved oxygen content, right? Right. Up to six to eight milligrams per liter. Yep. Compared to the heterotrophs, they, they don't care. They can, they can go real low. Mm -hmm. uh, the next key factor for nitrification is it involves these heterotrophs. It's BOD. We want low BOD in the water because that means there's fewer heterotrophs in the water. And what, what's happening here is the autotrophs have a hard time competing for resources with those really heavy-duty heterotrophs in the water. So what we do is we, we want to have the water be low BOD, which means low concentration of other bacteria, so the nitrifiers can do their job. Right, and then when you have this low BOD, you also need to make sure there's about a neutral pH. Uh, you know, the terminators, the heterotrophs, they, they care less about pH, but they still get affected by it. But the autotrophs are very sensitive to pH. If you don't have a nice neutral pH somewhere in the seven to eight range, they just not gonna do their job. Mm -hmm. Yep, and uh, the pickiness continues. Uh, they're also super picky about temperature, and this is one of the big ones, especially for wastewater lagoons. In general, bacteria performance, or how quickly they eat and how quickly they multiply, is cut in half uh, for about every 10 degrees Celsius you go down in temperature. So it's obviously an exponential decrease in performance, uh, but these autotrophs are ex especially fickle. In your wastewater lagoon, you're not going to be getting much nitrification when your water temperature gets below, um, uh, say, 50 or 60 degrees, and below 50, you're essentially getting no nitrification. Right, which makes it especially challenging. Another thing is mixing. Mixing is really important, you know? You can have oxygen in the water, you could have a 10-DO, but if you don't have mixing, you don't, you're not providing the, the food and the bugs and, and bringing them together with the oxygen, you're not gonna get the job done. So you really gotta create good mixing too. Mm -hmm. and the last thing here is biomass. Uh, you need a lot of these bacteria to accomplish the job because autotrophs, they eat really slow. They just, they're not as voracious. So you need to get a whole bunch of them out there in your lagoon to get the job done. The problem here is, though, that a lagoon, its, it's designed purpose is to be one giant volume given its surface area meaning it doesn't have a lot of surface area. And this is very key because these autotrophs, they want to grow on stuff. They're called attached growth organisms. So they're gonna grow on everything in the water, your aerators, your baffle, your liner. Uh, but unfortunately, there's just not enough surface area out there to get enough of these bugs, these autotrophs out there at the same time. So while they might be out there, they're working, there's just not enough to get the job done, especially at lower temperatures when they're working slower. 
Right. So just as a recap, you know, some of the six key factors are, you know, number one, you've got to provide enough oxygen for these autotroph bacteria to, to get their job done. Number two, you've got to reduce the BOD first before you're going to see the nitrification that you need. Number three is you need a nice neutral pH. Number four, uh, a temperature is a factor. They slow down at colder temperatures uh, relative to higher temperatures. Number five is mixing. And number six is biomass. You've got to have enough mouse to feed to get this job done quickly. Um, if you're looking for more information on this, we have, a we have a white paper on our website that talks uh, a little bit more detail and a little bit more scientifically about nitrification. Uh, check that out. We also have our Nitrox Lagoon Ammonia Solution, which is designed to be tacked onto the end of a lagoon system uh, in order to, to help the nitrifiers do their job and get down to really low ammonia limits. Go to tpemv.com to check that stuff out. All right. Uh, and also, stay tuned for a future video here. We're going to be addressing these concerns and you know, deciding or, or, or discussing how you can actually optimize these specifically in your wastewater lagoon to get the nitrification that you need. Uh, if you're looking for more videos, please subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, or you can go to our Facebook group. Uh, we have a Facebook group for Lagoons Do It Better, for like-minded people who believe that lagoons indeed do do it better. Uh, lastly, um, you should go to our website to tpenv.com slash ldib. Uh, hopefully that pops up somewhere around here. And uh, oh, we're giving away these free hats. So what you got to do is come on board. Uh, you got to subscribe to our YouTube, join our Facebook group. Let us know that you've got a lagoon, and uh, we'll send one of these your way. It's a pretty, pretty sweet hat. I don't know if it's real tree or mossy oak. I don't know if people are militant about that. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much.